good, is it? All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all keeping well. Well, a bit of a different sport this week, the old darts. It was fantastic to get my eye back uh, into the darts again. I've not done it since, I don't know, 20, 2017, 2018 at the um, PDC World Darts at Ali Pali. When I was uh, living down down south, I used to, it was only an hour and a half to get to London. So yeah, I used to shoot the darts most years at Ali Pali for Action Plus, and then obviously when I moved back up here and COVID, never filmed it, again, never photographed it again. And um, it was great when uh, Phil and Elliot, uh, Every Second Media, said, oh, do you fancy doing the Premier League darts?" So, without any thought at all, yeah, I want to get back into darts. Um, so shot up to Newcastle. In fact, I did last week's video on the Thursday, and then. Uh, hit, hit the stop on the record and flew straight up to Newcastle and, and did the Premier League darts exactly a week ago. It's Thursday again today. I've just been watching a bit of it on the telly actually, and I thought, got to get the video done. But uh, yeah, just to get just to get into the mood, into the spirit of it. But oh, it's fantastic. But one thing that I, it took me a little bit by surprise, a bit daft really, because I should have known. It is quick fire, so quick. Best of it's first to six legs, and I think one or two of the games were like six one or you know six two, and uh, it was so quick. At the PDC World Darts, obviously they play. I think I think they start early on in the championship, sort of first. To, I, I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like first to three sets, so you know six leg uh, six leg sets, and then, and then you win the set a bit like bit like you know like tennis and stuff. But this is just f uh, straight six legs, job done. I mean, one of the games was done in about a quarter of an hour. And so, you know, at the PDC, when you've got like an hour to do to do a match, you can get the first five or six legs, get plenty of reaction, you know, plenty of throw in, do your blurred stuff, do your multi, uh, multi exposures like I'm going to show you in a minute. And... Um, and you can fill your boots, you can head back to the press room, get all the stuff sent off, and then you almost know who's going to win, go out for the last, the last leg or the last set or the half of the last set, get your final images that you might not have got early on in the match, get the finished result, and then back to the press room. But this was like, wow, it was bang, 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 so quick. Before I knew it, I was two games in. And I thought, wow, I've got to get these sent off. And I was waiting for Luke Littler to come out and really hosed him down and got everything I could, knowing that he'd probably, because it's, it's um, quarterfinals, semifinals, and then the finals, I knew that I'd have more than at least one, one, one match of Luke Littler, but I still filled my boots just in case he got beat. Anyway, he ended up going through to the final, which we'll see in a minute. But anyway, without further ado, I'm blabbering on. Um, let's jump into the laptop and have a look at the set. Right, so uh, got there first off, went straight out, straight, straight out into the arena, and uh, just just a few images here, as you can see. GV, general GV, is just uh, obviously before before this is the calm before the storm, and uh, I wanted to get a lot more images of of the fans, and I said to Phil, yeah, I'll film my boots, mate. I'll get lots of one eighties and lots of fans and reaction, and I'll I'll go everywhere. I'll have a walk round, you know, thinking to the PDC championships totally different hardly got any time to shoot any or well, i haven't actually saved any uh, fans at all i was that busy getting as much as i could you know stock as well of, of all the players never really looked out into the crowd at all once or twice a few a few normal standard shots but and a few people holding the 180 card up but yeah didn't really get much at all i was too busy on the games because they were so quick i mean i went back into the press room to send the loop lit the set off and totally missed one match but i knew that i'd have another chance it was another quarter final so i knew i'd have another chance with at least one of the players in the semis but anyway so yeah just um some general views of the arena as it was empty uh, just to get some settings i mean as you can see look at the iso this is on the r5 oh incidentally r5 Got an R5 in the bag again. Absolutely chuffed to bits. Thanks to Tim Shrivener for selling me his R5. He, he, uh, he does a lot of agriculture and he, I think he found the file sizes a bit big, he said. So, yeah, grabbed myself a second-hand R5. So I've got an R5 and an R3 now. I'm halfway to being full mirrorless, but uh, that'll do for now. But, uh, yeah, so add the R5 on this. On, although I had the R5 on the 400, as you'll see in a minute. And... Um, I shot most of the matches and that on the R3 because it, we were a bit closer than we used to be again at, at uh, going back to the PDC World, World Championships at Ali Pali. We were a little bit closer. So uh, I did most of it, most of the, the night on the 70-200 and the R3. But um, anyway, so 
Here we go, we're straight into it, and this is the walk-on, just to try and build a bit of atmosphere. This is uh, Nathan Aspinall. He was playing um, Michael Smith, so get them walking on, and then straight into it, just go for a wide-angle view. What we're looking at here, so we're at 208 mil look, uh, no, not 208 mil. We're at 70 mil, 70 mil, 208. It's frame number 208. So we're on the R3, 70 mil. Now, speed wise, it wasn't actually too bad. Look, I'm at 1600th of a second here at ISO 5000, obviously F2.8, focusing on Nathan. I had the focus point on Nathan Aspinall's face there. And um, yeah, ISO 5000. So I was getting away with it at 1600th, which I thought was okay. So Got, got plenty of wideys like this just to set the scene and then <laughs> straight into the all the way there I was thinking I've got to have a go at a, a multi multi exposure frame again and um, I'll put the multi exposure settings up now can't remember because I was messing about and playing for for a good five minutes because I just wanted to get something a little bit different just to add variety to the set instead of this, all the throws. So this is uh, obviously, I like the tattoo on Nathan Aspinall's arm, so I thought that would make a nice multi-exposure. I mean, this is cropped in a bit, but um, yeah, so that's the settings on the uh, screen there now. But, um, and it's always good just to add to your set, some, a bit of variety, but I did find that I, I, I'd forgotten whether I did the multi-exposures on the upstroke before they threw or whether it was on the throw and as you can see here it's on the upstroke that the key thing here let's just go to there look you can see I've got the upstroke this is nice but Nathan's face is just a little bit blurred and he was obviously just moving his head a bit on the upstroke so that's probably I've got another one in a bit when he when he was in the uh, semi-final but but um, he was the only darts player on the night that kept his head pretty still. So it kind of works. Bit of a marmite, uh, marmite frame, this really. You either like it or you don't like it. But I like to be a bit different. But yeah, he's, he's j there's just a bit of movement in his face, unfortunately. So not quite very sharp. But, but uh, yeah, so I had a go at the old multi-exposures. And... Um, and then uh, Michael Smith was sort of getting beat, so I thought, right, I've got to get some reaction. So got plenty of reaction. Some ni nice tight stuff as well on the 400. What we at here? ISO 3200 look, 400 mil. That's still at 2,000th. So, so again, focus points right on, on uh, Michael Smith's eye look just there. You can see his che cheeks nice and sharp here, and this area of his beard's sharp. So that's where my focus point was. And you can see the drop-off look, see how soft it is. I could have gone up a bit on the... the uh, Aperture, I suppose, but that would have bumped the, bumped the ISOs right up. So, yeah, just some nice tight stuff, a bit of reaction, and then just come out a bit, bit wider, and then a bit more reaction from Michael Smith because I knew he was probably going to get beat. And uh, and then Aspinall started struggling, so I got a bit of reaction of him as well. And then uh, I think he's just winning there. Yeah, so he's just won there. And then on to the next game, Rob Cross. Um, again, getting ready, and it's nice to have all the banners at the back just to just set the scene a bit of all the different writing. It makes me laugh reading them all. But um, and of course, world champion Luke Humphreys really had to fill my boots with him. Although Luke Littler was the game after, I thought I've got to fill my boot, boots with Luke Humphreys as well. So got a few of him with a walk on, and then straight away back into the throwing. Uh, what we on here? We're at 200 mil. Still the ISOs are still. I'm back. I'm up to 2,000 to the second here. Look at uh, ISO 3200 and uh, nice and sharp around this area, the focus point, and uh, just trying to fill my boots again, getting plenty of images onto the 400, just get some nice tight stuff of him and Rob, and uh, just to get that, and uh, uh, who won that one? Rob Cross, Rob Cross actually won that one, but um, I must have took about four or 5,000 images, I think, on the night, so I've just picked out one or two to go through tonight, otherwise we will be here all night. And then, of course, Luke Litter comes down, I'm thinking, right, got to hose him down. I was just following him up to, to the start of his walk-on and he kissed his girlfriend, which I thought made, made a nice frame, you know, because I know there were some stories about him and his girlfriend early on when he was on the PDC, uh, on the uh, World Championships. So, yeah, just got one of him giving his, uh, his girlfriend a bit of a snog there. And then he was having a laugh with the fans, got one or two of that. And, uh, and then I really like this one because 
when they walk on, it's quite tricky because it doesn't half mess about with your exposures. But what we are here, we're at a thousandth. So I've knocked it down for the walk on, knowing that it was quite dark. And then I think I was just on the exposure compensation. Did it tell us? Yeah, we're at minus one there. Look, because it got a bit brighter with these fireworks, but it did half light his back up nicely. And that makes quite a nice frame, I thought. But uh, especially he's in the center, he's side lit. And uh, that's just lit the front of him a bit, but this has lit the back of him. I'm just walk, waiting for him to walk past. And uh, yeah, I thought that worked out quite nicely. Something a bit different again to add to the set. And um, yeah, Peter Wright with his Newcastle themed attire, which I thought was pretty cool. He always gets, I'm sure you've seen Peter Wright with his Moeekin and that. And uh, he was getting pumped on the walk on. And uh, a few of him. And then straight onto the 400 to get lots of tight shots of Luke Littler. Back onto the 70 to 200. What well, I've gone down to a thousandth there because I'm just thinking about perhaps blurring his throwing hand a little bit just to get a bit of movement. And, uh, and then I was just, I just hosed him. I stayed on Luke Litter for nearly the whole of his match, just trying to get as much reaction on that as I could. Uh, St um, Steve Wright, crikey, bless him. Um, Peter Wright with, uh, with his tattoo on his head. Well, with his, uh, it's a stencil, I think, isn't it? But uh, tattoos that we used to have as kids. But uh, yeah, he's a character. But uh, Back onto Luke Humphreys because I, I thought mm, there was a bit of beef with these two. I think uh, Peter Wright was all for smashing him, he said, at the beginning of the game. But um, Luke Littler went on to win. Bit of reaction from Peter Wright. Plenty more reaction and back tight. Bit more reaction of Luke Littler. That was quite nice. A uh, bit more throwing. Just filling my boots really best I can, knowing that it was going to be a real quick sort of quarter of an hour, 20 minute game. And a uh, bit of reaction there. That was good. He was reeling it. I think he had a couple of couple of legs where he was getting a bit thrown, a bit dodgy, and then he was doing the re he was he was doing. I didn't get it all. I did get the sequence, but like casting his rod out, casting the bait out, and then reeling him in. Did it towards the fans. He really did get the fans going. Bit more reaction here, just with his eyes closed. Probably only a blink, but I managed to time it perfect. Looks like a bit of dejection, so that was good. Then looking up which was all good, plenty of reaction. And then I had to go at the old multi-exposures on this, but multi-frame exposures, but didn't really work. Far too much movement in his head. And that's on the throw stroke as well. And you can see it's just not balanced. It doesn't, doesn't quite go right. But um, put the, what am I down there? Look, 50th. So I went right down to a 50th. I'm only at ISO 160 there, look. Just to get plenty of movement in the hand. Always nice to get the, his head is a little bit soft, look, but... But a uh, nice bit of movement in his hand there. And then that's it. Match was over like that. He beat Peter Wright and uh, the handshake. And then just some of it. I thought that was quite nice. It's framed his face quite nicely. So I sent that off just to something different. And uh, yeah, he gave a bit of a, a, a bit of um, reaction towards the crowd. I think Peter Wright had him on his feet and his toes. But yeah, a bit more reaction. And then just walking off straight past us. Just something different. Oh, that's the other. This is, this is now... I think this is the semi-final again with Nathan Aspinall. So I had another go at him, knowing that he was the only one that really kept his head still. Thought I'd have another go, but there's still a bit of movement there. Look, but um, back on the upstroke, but it kind of works. Again, Marmite frame, you either like it or you don't. Let me know in the comments below what you think, whether you think it is arty and nice to see, or whether you think it's don't really belong in a dart set. But anyway, always good to try something different, I reckon. But uh, And then on to the... Um, is this the next game now? Yeah, this is the last. So this is the final, uh, semi-final now between Luke Littler and Michael Van Gerwen and uh, big old fella Michael Van Gerwen. It looks quite scary, doesn't he? So that's him coming on nicely side lit. So I thought I'd get one of that just as he's walking onto the hockey. And then back on, what's this on? This is a, on the 70 to 200, it's 170 mil look. Now I'm at 2000th and uh, ISOs are creeping up there, look, to 8000th. So... Yeah, that's about on the limit really, but it's still, let's just zoom in on that a bit and see if it's noisy or not. Let's look, just look at that for, that ain't bad for, um, to say that's ISO 8000, that's not bad on the R3 at all, that ain't, is it? That's nice, that. But uh, anyway, yeah, we're down to, back on the 400 look there, look at 2000th, F2.8, down to 4000th, took the ISO down again on the uh, 400, which is interesting. And let's just zoom right in on him. Look at the quality of that. On the old 400 and the R3. That, uh, uh, that's on the R5, sorry, on the... God, it is good. I did the, I used the R5 for the first time this weekend. And my stock imagery... Uh, what did I send off? About 130 stock 
of players simply because I've got the R5 and I can pull those images right in. I can literally shoot a player anywhere on the pitch and have confidence that I can use it as a stock image. Even the goalkeepers, you can pull them right in, crop in and use it as a stock image. It's absolutely fantastic, the R5 is, but I know I raved on about that just at Christmas when I had one on demo, but uh, yeah, my stock imagery is, is fantastic now because I've got so much confidence that I can snap a player wherever I want and uh, get a nice quality image. But um, yeah, so you see the quality there on the R5. Nice and tight on Luke Littler. And then just one or two setting the scene again of them sort of head to head, if you like. And then nice reaction. He always gives a nice reaction, MVG does. So um, some good reaction there. Bit of colour and bit of difference in the tones there. Look on the old edit, not very good. But a um, bit more reaction. Luke Littler come out wide again just to get the backdrop in. Look of the fans watching and the stairs here. Uh, just to set the scene of them watching each other. Again, just getting ready to throw head to head, if you like, just as the other players walking around. And that's it, I think. Yeah, this is where MVG throws the winning dart. And uh, I knew it was coming. At least you can prepare yourself for that. Uh, knew it was coming. Knew he always gives a good celebration. And uh, yeah, he gave the old boom. And uh, But look at the difference. Let's just look at the settings. So 2.8, I'm at exposure compensation minus two. Look, 4,000. And then those fireworks kick in. Let's have a look how it changes. So look at that look. Down to ISO 2000, so I've got more light, but it has affected the colours a bit, look. Just affected the colours. Down to, look how it's getting brighter. He's obviously front lit now. It's, it's nice, a bit blue. It's messed the greens up a bit. Perhaps not edited that great on my behalf, but uh, ISO down to 1000, look. ISO down to, have I gone? No, it's still at 1600th there, look. ISO's down to 640 there. We're getting even brighter. And he's nicely front lit, but it's green, just lost the greens a bit. But uh, yeah, and then as the fireworks stop, look, that's quite nice, nice, nice front lit. Looking my way, so that worked. He's back up to 2000th again, so. But that just goes to show that the auto ISO on the R3 worked a treat, really. As it got lighter, it almost kept everything the same. Yeah, the tones are a bit different, but it kept the, it kept, his skin tones are nearly the same all the way through, look which is good, and that's that auto ISO kicking in and working, which I'm really impressed with on the R3. And uh, yeah, then um, just having a handshake, then he gave another bit of reaction, which was good, always got to be on your toes. And uh, yeah, and uh, is that the last one? Yeah, the last, that's the last one of Luke Littler walking off look, looking a little bit dejected. So, and I was happy that I'd got a good set of Luke Littler. That's what the whole, the whole point of the evening really was to get some nice stock of Luke Littler, so yeah got plenty of him and uh, yeah that's it and uh, just a quick look through I say I took about four and a half five thousand tried electronic shutter and all sorts and uh, yeah really good great to get my eye back in on the darts and uh, I'm back up I think it's is it Manchester or Liverpool uh, next month I think for another another round of the Premier League so yeah fill me boots again and um, try and try and get some different bits and bobs perhaps try and get a bit more of the fan reaction if I can but now I know what to do now I know that it's a real quick quick game I'll uh, I'll try and time things a bit better, and uh, it's always different when when you it's always new when you, when you go to a new event, and I knew what to expect, but I didn't know it was going to be quite that quick. But anyway, every day's a learning day, and next time I'll try and you know just like for one one set uh, one leg, I'll try and get lots of fans and that. But uh, now that I've got a nice set of stock of most of the players, but uh, yeah, interesting to see them them settings and that, and go through it and. I did. A, um, I must do a quick video probably next week now. Um, went rallying last weekend. Took the R3 70 to 200. Just a day out really. wasn't going to do much photography. wasn't going to make a video or anything. But I was super impressed with the vehicle tracking on the focus tracking on the R3. Um, Rach was doing some video, and I think I'll probably be able to knock up a quick five-minute video just to show how good the focus tracking was. Because I was literally we were stood on a corner for a start. I was doing some panning and. Uh, it picked up the car and stuck on it, which was really nice. Got some nice panning shots. And, um, and then the, uh, for the second stage, the cars were flying around the corner and the focus tracker was picking up the cars instantly and then staying on them as they came past us. But I'll knock up a bit, bit of a video in the week, perhaps put a video out next Wednesday or something on that, just a two or three minute video, just to show how good it was. Because I'm sure Rachel did some fantastic video and I'm sure I can knock up a bit of a video just to show you how good the focus tracking was for, for vehicles. But uh, anyway, jobs are good. And, 
where am I this Saturday? Over at Derby again, back at Pride Park this Saturday. So looking forward to that, go back there. It's nice, nice working conditions at Pride Park. So enjoy it there. And it's only about an hour and 20 from home. So not too bad. Let me know where you are guys, whether it's on the Facebook uh, photography chat page on Facebook or whether it's on, on, uh, on the comments below. Let me know where you are and I hope you have a, a great game tomorrow. And um, yeah, brilliant. Leave your comments below on the darts. Let me know if you like that multi-exposure frame or not. Bit of a Marmite frame that, but um, I like it just for something different. Always dare to be different in photography because you never know when you're going to get noticed with something something other than the norm, you know. But especially if, you know, if, if football players, if you can get one of them running or something and they've got tattoos or something like that, you know, if you can get it right, it makes quite a nice, nice frame. But uh, anyway, if you could remember to hit that like button, guys, that'd be really much appreciated. It just lets YouTube know that you're enjoying the channel and the, uh, the content. And uh, yeah, really appreciate that. Thanks for all your support, guys. Thanks for all the comments. Get back to you as soon as I can. Have a great weekend. Catch up next week. Jobs are good.